Good morning. I want to thank the Bells for playing this morning and sharing a little bit of Christmas music uh, before we start to get us ready to worship our Lord together. Well, with that said, let's sing another wonderful hymn. This is Joy Sunday. We're going to watch the uh, third, the pink candle lit today. And so we th sing for joy, Hark the Glad Sound, hymn 349. And the glad sound the Savior comes the Savior promised long let every heart prepare a throne and every voice a song he comes the prisoners to release in Satan's bondage the gates of brass before him burst, the iron fetters yield. He comes the broken heart to bind, the bleeding soul to cure, and with the treasures of his grace to enrich the heart. Thy welcome shall be mine, and hands eternal larches ring with thy beloved name. If you're able, would you please rise? We're going to follow the order on page six in the hymnal supplement, which is uh, before us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. We take a moment of silence to reflect on our sins. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent to them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll continue now with the intro it as it is printed before us. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his saints, but let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is nearer to those who fear him, that glory may dwell in your land. Yes, the Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and make his footsteps away. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. We sing together. Lord, have mercy on us. 
Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. You may be seated. I know it's not printed up there, so I'll leave it on this screen. But we're going to light the three Advent candles. The, of course, hope and peace. The second candle and the third one today is joy. But while we do it, we're going to sing one verse. You're going to have to do it by memory, so this is going to be good practice. Of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Ransom, Captive Israel. So I think you can do this, and you know the refrain. So let's sing together. That is a good thing, God bringing us out of captivity. It brings us wonderful joy. Would you rise for prayer? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading comes to us from the 61st chapter of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and a day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display and splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are a people of the Lord is blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. As a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes to us from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Here we see that joy again. Rejoice always. Pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all, hold on to what is good, reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. 
May the whole, your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you're able, would we rise and singing the Alleluia? Alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. This is the reading that Pastor Freudenberg will preach on from God's Word. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. They asked him, then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I'm not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Finally, they said, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am a voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied. But among you stands one you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany at the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our children's message. And I want you to think about something that I used to wear that a lot of us used to wear as a kid. You may be familiar with this or not. Uh, we used to wear bracelets or t-shirts or hats that had four letters on them. Does anybody know what those four letters were? Morgan? What? Love? No. I think Billy's trying to help you out there. <laughs> what would Jesus do? Very good. A little assist from the parents is always good. Uh, WWJD. What would Jesus do the idea is you would wear something like a bracelet right and if at any point in your life You are in a tough situation. You could look down and think what would Jesus do in this situation? How would Jesus respond? Uh, but Pastor Travis just read Another story from the gospel that involved another person whose name begins with J. Does anybody know who that was? John very good John the Baptist. John the Baptist, he came 
not to tell people, not to forgive people's sins, not to heal people, but to tell people about Jesus. It says that he was a witness to the light. That is, John served as a witness. He told other people about the light, about Jesus Christ. So when you think of those four letters, WWJD, think not just of Jesus, but think what would John do? What would John the Baptist do? Well, he would tell people about Jesus. He would be a witness to Jesus. And so that's what we're going to pray for. We're going to pray that God would help us to tell others about Jesus and witness to him in our lives. You fold your hands, close your eyes as we quiet our thoughts, quiet our hearts and minds as we prepare to talk to God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent Jesus uh, to do what we could not do, to live a perfect life and to earn this free forgiveness that he gives to us. Lord, help us to be a witness to him, to tell others about him in every aspect of our lives. In his name we pray. Amen. We now continue by singing our hymn of the day, a hymn that reflects our reading from the book of Isaiah from last week. Isaiah 40, Comfort, Comfort, Ye My People. Make ye straight what long was crooked. Make the rougher places plain. his holy reign. For the glory of the Lord, now earth is shed abroad, shall, shall see the token that his word is near. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I don't know if you've noticed the same thing that I have in my life, but I've noticed that we can tend to get somewhat identified with the things we own. As so often happens, as has happened in my own life, the things that we own become more than simply things we use for a time. They become sort of an identity for us. Perhaps if you're a farmer or grew up around farmers in a farming, fact, uh, farming family like I did, it's the choice of tractor. That is, you don't just use a, a red tractor or a blue tractor or a green tractor. Instead, you're a, a New Holland guy or a Case IH farmer, or a John Deere man, or a John Deere woman. Maybe it applies to cars. You don't simply drive a Ford truck or a Chevy truck, but whatever vehicle you drive becomes a part of your identity. See, what happens is that a, a personal preference for one tractor or another, one car or another, one brand of clothing or another, a preference which, of course, is not a bad thing in and of itself, can soon become a sort of identity marker. can become part of who you are, not just what you use. And companies are picking up on this. There is a relatively new movement in marketing called lifestyle brands. Lifestyle brands, brands that seek to sell you not just a product, not just something you use for a time, but a way to live, a way to belong, being part of a community of their customers who live the same way, have the same goals, hopes, and aspirations. A creative.com article from this past July describes lifestyle brands in this way. Quote, you're not just selling a physical item. You're selling the way of life behind it. For example, if you're selling a new fitness tracker, you're not just selling the tracker. 
You're selling the active lifestyle clients want when they buy the product. End quotation. You sell or buy not only the product, but the lifestyle. In this case, an, act, an identity as an active, healthy person. So just do a little brainstorming with me this morning and think of perhaps two to three brands that come to your mind when you think of lifestyle brands, brands that excel not just at selling a product, but a way of life. Take maybe 10 seconds and think of two or three lifestyle brands in your mind. There's perhaps a few that come most immediately to my mind, the first of which is Nike. That iconic swoosh that we all know, that statement, just do it. When you buy a pair of Nikes, you are not only buying a pair of shoes, you are signaling your desire to be an athlete. When you lace up your pair of Air Jordans, you can imagine yourself on the same team as Michael Jordan. You are connected to your favorite athletes because they wear Nike, and now you wear the same shoes they do. What about something like Airstream trailers? You know what an Airstream trailer is, those stainless steel, perfectly silver campers that you may have seen on the road. I didn't know it, but in doing some research, that is an entire lifestyle, and every single day, thousands of people post on Instagram about their Airstream camper, how that defines their life in a way. Even when they aren't camping, they want to live that Airstream life, this relaxed, take it easy approach to the world around them. See, this holiday season and really every day of our lives, we face simply an onslaught of marketing. Products designed to sell you not just on themselves, but an entire way of life, a lifestyle which they claim will make you happy. Brands no longer just want to sell you shoes, a watch, some jewelry, whatever it may be. They want to sell you an entire way of life and claim you as a lifelong customer because your identity become so tied up in that brand. Our gospel reading from this morning is from the Gospel of John and tells us that familiar story of John the Baptist. Now, we already had a sermon about John the Baptist in our midweek Advent services a few days back. After all, it was John who gave the best sermons in the fewest words. The first, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The second, he, Jesus, must become greater. I must become lesser. John was a powerful preacher who called all to repentance, especially the Pharisees and the Sadducees, religious leaders of his day who had lost their true love for God and for neighbor. John names them especially as a brood of vipers, uninterested in serving God and only interested in serving themselves. But our reading for this morning from John is slightly different than our reading from the Gospel of Matthew so many days back. And it presents us with a slightly different picture of John. John is not important in the first place for who he is, for what he does, or even what he preaches. John is important because of who he is not. If you have your bulletin this morning, take it out and take a look at our reading, especially starting in verse 19. The Jewish leaders, those same leaders that John would later call a brood of vipers, he would name them as whitewashed tombs, they come to him to ask him who he is. What's his identity? What's he doing here? As our text says, he did not fail to confess, but confessed freely I am not the Messiah. So they ask again, really, who are you? Why don't you let us know? Are you Elijah? He answers, I am not. So they continue their line of questioning, are you the prophet? 
Are you the one promised in the book of Deuteronomy that would come after Moses, one who would be a second Moses? Are you the prophet whom we are to expect? And he tells them simply, no. So of course they continue to wonder, who is this strange man? Who is this man who eats locusts and wild honey? Who is he? He answers, I am the one, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. I am only a voice. John knows who he is not. He is not the Savior. He is not the prophet. He is not the reincarnation of Elijah. He is not really the one to whom they should pay attention. He is merely a voice calling for them to make straight the way of the Lord, to repent and to prepare their hearts to receive Jesus. John himself was not the light, the light of the world, but he came to bear witness to the light, to be that voice that pointed people to Jesus. John knew who he was not. And in calling for all to repent, he pointed the way forward to Christ. So perhaps this text raises this question for us today. Do you know who you are? And maybe more importantly, do you know who you are not? Do you know who you are and do you know who you are not? It's perhaps a deceptively simple question, but as we have already seen, lifestyle brands, or really any brand, wants to claim you as one of their own. They really want to capture not just your wallet, not just your pocketbook, but also part of your heart, part of your loves, making you a lifelong customer. So the good life is defined as using their products. We know there are a million other ways in which we and the world around us want to define ourselves that are perhaps less than helpful. Perhaps your identity is, as we've already discussed, tied up in the products you use, but perhaps your identity is tied up entirely in your education or your knowledge, always having the right answer about something. Perhaps your identity is tied up in your vocation, your job, your career. Maybe your identity is tied up in our political affiliations or our friend groups, whatever it is. It can be so tempting for us to want to stake our very identity, our lives, and our meaning on all of these things. But John reminds us of who we are not. We are not consumers meant only to buy and sell things in the marketplace. We are not defined by our past sin. We are not simply the product of our past history and our mistakes. We are not caught up in the rest of the races of the world, seeking to gain more and more power in the race, in striving for more goods and more authority so that we can rule over a certain group of people. No, John reminds us that we are none of those things. That our most important identity is that we belong to Christ, to the one that he pointed to, the one his voice spoke for. Only Christ paid for you by his blood. Only Christ claimed you as his own and has authority over you. You do not belong to the world. You do not belong to the power of sin outside of you or inside of you. Who are you? You are Christ. You belong to Jesus who forgives your sin, who claims you as his own. And the same Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to empower you today in his service. Your life is no mistake. You do not exist merely to consume and to be consumed by the world, but Jesus has a purpose for you. 
As we talked in our children's message earlier, we used to see those bracelets quite frequently that had those four letters on them, WWJD, which would stand, as we know, for what would Jesus do? It's a good question. Perhaps we ought to also ask that question, what would John the Baptist do? What would the forerunner do? John had one purpose in his life, and that was to witness to the light. It's the same purpose we have in our lives. To show forth Jesus in every way, in every interaction that we have with our neighbors, that we might be the salt and the light of the world. For a world consumed with owning and finding their identity in products or politics or any number of things, we bear witness to the light that alone has the power to set people free. Some of your clothes, as mine do, probably bear the mark of the company that made them. Right, that Nike swoosh, that Adidas three-stripe, whatever it is, those marks bear witness about the company who made their clothes. But what about our lives? John's witness to us, John's lesson for us this morning, is that like those clothes that bear the mark of their owner, the company that made them, our lives should bear the mark of the one who claims us as his own. Our lives should give witness to the one who gives us life, who sets us free from sin. Like John, we are not the light. We will not save anyone through our actions alone. We will not help anyone for eternity alone. But you and I do have this privilege. This privilege of witnessing to the light. This privilege of bringing our faith to so many who need to hear it. So in this dark time, be that witness. Reflect that light of Jesus, that light of Christ this Advent and Christmas season. For the darkness of the world needs your witness. Jesus has given you the tools necessary to witness to him in your relationships. So be like John. What would John do? Witness to the light. And in the name of Jesus, amen. Now may that peace of God which far surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Continue with the offering. We offer up our highs and offerings to the Lord. There is a basket at the entrance and also online at calvaryleads.com. At this time, though, would you please rise as we prepare to offer up our prayers to God? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us our identity in Christ Jesus. We thank you for declaring us not guilty and belonging to you as your sons, as your daughters. Lord, help us to reflect you as the light, to witness to you. Especially we pray for our pastors, teachers, missionaries. This morning we remember the Sharp family the Anthea Shivey and her family as they seek to witness you. For Pastor Flo, working in the Hispanics in South Sioux and, and here in Sioux land in general. Lord, we pray that their actions would bring the light so more and more people believe. But Lord, we pray for each of us as we reflect that light in our lives. Lord, may our actions, may as we go caroling or go out with our families or eat dinner, that those actions and even words would bear witness that we are yours and belong to you and that they can as well. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you are the great physician, the healer of body, 
mind and soul. We bring before you those that are hurting right now, especially the Woolridge family, thinking of Jeff's mom. Lord, bring them through this at this time and give them peace in the resurrection. Help them to meet the days ahead. Also be with Joe Hutton as he finds himself alone in the hospital with COVID-19. We pray for miraculous healing and that he might return home soon. We pray for those others that have asked our prayers, especially this morning for Charlie, Kent, Devin, Beth, Amy, Blake, Jeff, Sarah, Lynette. We pray for the frontline workers in the hospitals and the, our military and government. Lord, we think of Psalm 91, that you will be with us in the deadly pestilence and not let it harm us. We pray that you would hold to your promise and guard your people in your church that, and bring an end to this virus and all of its implications. Lord, we pray in that regard to our government and all that goes on at this time for our president and governor, our judges and state and um, national legislatures and our local leaders. We pray for wisdom to each of them that we might live in peace. And Lord, be ultimately their God and help us to rest under you ultimately is our leader. And Lord, we thank you for the good gifts and that we celebrate this day, especially baptism for Mary, Steve, Carla, Julie, Chris, Ashley, Madison, Ellen, Ashley, Kevin, Hayden, Jim, Chandler, Robin, Emily, Megan, Joseph, Laverne, and Jessa. We thank you for each of them and their identity they've been given in you. Lord, I pray that you would continue to grow them in their walk with you daily. Lord, we ask all these things and all others in Christ Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated. We're going to close our service singing a prayer. Come thou long expected Jesus. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins release us let us find our rest in thee israel strength and consolation hope of all the earth thou art dear desire of every nation joy of every longing Born thy people to deliver, born a child and yet a king, born to reign in us forever, now thy gracious kingdom bring, by thine own eternal spirit, rule in all our hearts alone. By thine all-sufficient merit, raise us to thy glorious throne.